Hi, I'm Paul Sweeney, host of the Business Behind Your Business podcast, uh, which is a podcast for business owners everywhere. And look, we like to bring you the conversations to help you uh, run, grow, and thrive in your business. And uh, look, in our last episode, we discussed the need to do a health check on your business. Uh, to get to the root of the causes of why your business is not as healthy as it could be and why it's not performing as well as it could be, particularly when other businesses, your competitors, are actually at succeeding at the moment and thriving when your business may not be um, growing or, or being as profitable as, as it could be. So uh, what we talked about in our last episode was how we actually identify the cause of those pain points, what's causing that financial stress and what's the plan for moving on from that? What's your plan for recovery? So the key thing that's come out of that is that there are uh, three main consequences if you don't take action, if you don't you know, identify what the causes are and you don't put in place a plan to move forward. And the three consequences of that is that, well, you're not going to know where you are at financially, where your business is at and how um, healthy or unhealthy it is or what cash flow issues you've got coming up. Um, are you actually managing your cash flow? There's going to be a lot of things that you just aren't aware of. And that uncertainty actually causes stress in a lot of areas, um, particularly in your in your personal life, um, particularly if you've got other commitments on um, maybe your mortgage on your house, um, you know, you know, education costs uh, or just day-to-day -day living costs with, with interest rates rising. So looking at what can we do there um, – to eliminate that financial uncertainty. The other th second one that uh, if you don't actually take steps now to identify what's wrong with your business or, or why it's not performing is that you may miss other opportunities. So we'll see. In the past couple of years, we've seen a lot of those businesses that are actually thriving at the moment. They were in a position to take advantage of opportunities that arose. Now, if you're not on top of where your business is at financially, you're not on top of your business health, you not, don't have a current plan of how you're going to move it forward, you're going to continue to miss those opportunities. And if you're missing those opportunities, but your competitors are taking up those opportunities, well, they're going to continue to go forward and succeed. And they're going to take more of the market share. That means your business is actually going to start suffering even more. So we need to get your business in a position where you can take advantage of those missed opportunities. And the third th consequence there is that really, if you don't take action now to address those issues, then you're going to be left with a business that's not efficient, uh, not generating cash, not generating profit, and without actually having a plan, you're not going to you're not going to do it. It's like saying I, I want to start running, but you don't actually have any specific plan. It's not a case of well, I'm going to meet up with with my friend and and go for a run on Tuesday morning. And he's going to be there to, to keep me accountable for that. Without a plan to do something and some de definite actions, you're not going to move that forward. So in this episode, we're going to explore some of the essential steps that you can take to improve your business financial performance and set it on the path to success. So we'll discuss areas of your financial status, some setting some clear goals about what you're going to do to move it forward, creating an action plan and the importance of accountability. And specifically, we're going to look at seven action items that you should take. So let's dive in and have a look at the strategies that are going to help your business thrive in the coming year. So the seven steps that we want to take to make your business stronger. Okay, so the first thing is we need to know where we're starting from. We need to know what your current financial state is. So you need to have good, solid financial accounting systems. I'm an accountant. We provide small accounting and taxation services as well to small, medium businesses. And we've just picked up a number of clients recently. And what is still astounding is that they have not got, they've been trading for multiple years and they still do not have a good financial system. Some of them are still just running off bank statements, not knowing where they're up to at any point in time during the year. Some don't have financial statements at all. They've just relied on um, a summary of income and hopefully all of their expenses in their tax return. So without that financial information, you don't put yourself in a position where you've got a good understanding of where your business is at and what you need to do to move forward. So the first step is if you don't have that under control, you need to get that in place. And there are plenty of tools around today to make that easy for you as a business owner. Now, you don't need to be an accountant to set these up. Uh, it does help to get some guidance because we've seen a lot of people come to us with setting up their zero or their QuickBooks, um, and they've set them up, but they haven't set them up to comply with accounting and taxation requirements of their, their, their local area. So 
we suggest that, yes, they're easy to manage, but get them set up correctly by an accountant or a bookkeeper and get some advice, get some training on the best way to do it and use some of the tools that link in. So it's tools like Dext, which actually help you save time on the processing and set up those automatic rules so that this, the, the same types of transactions are recorded the same way every time without you having to spend a lot of time doing the work. Okay, so get your financial system up to date, but also not just get it up to date, but actually identify the reports that you need to be looking at on a regular basis. Look at the reports you need to know, know, like particularly your profit and loss and your cash flow. Uh, They are two key ones, but the other ones would be your accounts receivable. So how much are you owed by your customers and how long has it been since you issued the invoice and you still haven't been paid? And ideally, that should not be any longer than your actual payment terms. If your payment terms are you need to be paid within seven days and you've got customers that have taken four weeks, two months to pay you, you need to get on the phone and contact that customer now. Uh, But don't keep extending sales credit to them if they're not paying you. So use those reports to identify um, the progress of your business. So once you've got those accounting systems set up, the next step of sorting out your taxes is so much easier because all the data for your tax compliance comes straight out of your accounting system. There are times uh, when the taxation authorities, so the Australian Taxation Office, is a bit more lenient about your compliance and obligations, and we've seen that in the past couple of years. But going forward, they're starting to ramp that up. So if you aren't on top of your taxation obligations, you will start to get those um, uncomfortable letters and phone calls from the ATO, which will be followed by action if you have not got your taxation up to date. So there's a couple of parts to that. One is lodging, lodging accurate returns, so accurate activity statements and accurate income tax returns. The second thing is making sure your payments are up to date. So a lot of business owners draw money out of the business but don't set aside money for paying those taxes. So the goods and services tax, which is not actually your income, you pay as you go with holding tax, so the tax that you're deducting from your employees' wages, that's not your income. The superannuation guarantee, again, that is belonging to your employees. You need to be paying that on the regular basis in time to meet your complying requirements. And your annual income taxes, they need to be paid on time. Otherwise, the ATO will start to take action. Okay, they'll start to take action for non-lodgement and start to take action for non-payment. So if you're not being able to make your payments on time, you need to contact them and see what you can do about getting some kind of extension of payment terms. But the key is you need to be setting your cash flow and your profit so that you are able to meet those commitments as and when they fall due. Um, The the extra time you spend cleaning up taxation takes away from the time running your business. So it's good to get that in place and working and under control right from the beginning. So what are the goals as well? So the step three, setting some clear goals about where you want to be, what kind of profit you want to be making. Or what kind of cash flow? Are you looking to pay off some debt, uh, reduce some of that? Maybe you've been relying on credit card debt for the last couple of years to, to meet your obligations. Get rid of that debt. So what's the plan? How much cash do you need to be generating? And once we know how much cash we need to be generating and how much profit we need, we can set more targets about, or more specific targets about the level of sales that you need to be generating and the profit margins that you need to be generating. And then that helps take you closer uh, to your goals, but also helps you identify other areas of your business that are not performing. So if you've got a target margin of, say, uh, gross profit, maybe of 60%, but when we look at the figures and you can run your reports from your zero or your QuickBooks to give you these statistics on your profit margin, if your profit margin is not 60%, but let's say it's 35, you've got an issue there. And the issue is either in you're not selling at a high enough price or it's costing you too much to sell. So let's set some clear goals about how much cash we need to pay off that debt, to fund our living and to meet all our taxes and how much profit we need to be making. So set some clear goals and it's a lot easier to work to those goals if you have some specific targets, specific values. So instead of saying, I want to make more profit, I set a goal of, I want to make $100,000 of profit this year in 12 months. So how am I going to do that? Because then if you don't set specific goals, if you just set very vague goals of, say, more profit, or I want to increase sales, you know, I could increase sales by $1 and I've achieved my goal. I'm not any better off. I'm not any uh, in a stronger position, but I've met that goal because it was too vague and too general. So set some specific goals in there. 
And once you set those specific goals, we're coming up to step four here, and that is creating an action plan. So create an action plan to help you achieve those goals. What are the steps you need to take? What are the steps you need to take? Once you've identified the actions of the goals, what are the action items that you need to take? If it's a case of you need more sales, well, how are you going to go about that? Well, you need to have a marketing plan. Who are you going to sell to? Do you need another product to complement a current um, current product you've got so that you can sell more, you can upsell? So when a customer comes to buy, they want to buy a pair of shoes, you can sell them the socks to go with it. You know, the McDonald's fries example there, it's, you know, would you like fries with that? What can you sell with that customer to increase the value of each sale, increase the margin on each sale, the profit margin, increase the cash coming in from each sale? So what actions do you need to take? Do you need to hire somebody new? How many hours a week do you need that person to work? What level of sales activity do you need that person to do? These are starting to get into the more specifics about what specific actions need to be taken to deliver specific results. So you need to pinpoint what those steps are so that you can reach your objectives, okay, without that specific action documented and acted upon, you're not going to meet your goals. Okay. So the next part there, there I mentioned acted upon. You've got to act upon those, those goals and objectives. And that's where we have to come to the, the next area or the key area where a lot of planning and goal setting falls over. And that is the failure to implement. Failure to implement is one of the key things why people aren't successful in achieving their goals. Okay. You need to ensure that you follow through on your actions. Follow through on your action plan. Make yourself accountable. And I talked about that whole idea of I want to run more, but why do I want to run? And how am I going to make sure I do it? Well, meeting up with somebody to run together, making sure that I've told them I'm going to meet them at 6 o'clock at the park to go for a run. They're going to be pretty unhappy with me if I don't turn up at 6 o'clock, and they did, okay? So make yourself accountable to people. And it could be you know, a key person in your, t- in your team, your employment. It could be your spouse. Could be uh, a mentor. So uh, if you think back to Jason Owen from D2N Technology, talked about the role of mentors and how valuable that was in growing his business and how it held him accountable. And he's achieved so much more because of that accountability. So we need to make sure we actually implement. Set some specific dates by which you need to take those actions. And how are you going to know that they are successful? How are you going to know they're successful? Well, Once you've got specific actions, you've got an outcome that you want to achieve, okay? And then we need to review those results. So step six is review the results and make adjustments, okay? So use the data from your financial accounting system. Get the reports out. Check the results against your goals. You would have set specific goals. Let's say your goal was to increase sales by $200,000, Okay, so in this quarter that has just gone, we've increased sales by $40,000. So we're a bit behind if we even that out over four quarters. We wanted $50,000 of growth. We only got $40,000. Well, what didn't happen? What? Where did we fall short? Okay, well, we forgot to take into account the long weekends that were there and that affected our sales activity. Okay, so how are we going to implement that, a strategy to fix that going forward? What other issues are we going to come against? So how do we counteract those, um, you know, things that are going to come up that are going to prevent us from achieving our goals? So what do we need to do? So we might have Christmas holidays coming up, which is great. We'll have a lead up to Christmas, but we'll have a drop off after Christmas maybe. So if we're planning a lead up to Christmas, we need to increase our activity. We need to increase our availability. We might need to bring in some casual staff to help us sell more in that period. So have a look at... How are we going? So review your results and make adjustments to your plan as you go. So review your results regularly. I would say as an absolute minimum quarterly, but ideally monthly. Ideally monthly, you should be reviewing and adjusting your plans. And step seven here. Step seven, I cannot stress this enough, but seek expert advice. Seek advice from somebody that is experienced in that area that you need help. So get help from an accountant, get help from a business advisor, get help from an experienced marketing advisor, a marketing consultant. You can test the credentials, find out you know, their experience, find out from people who have worked with them 
how effective they've been. Yeah, there's a lot of social proof out there. There's also a lot of, I guess, overnight successes who have come up, but they've got no track record. Find out who you're dealing with, but get advice. Okay, don't try and learn everything because you don't have time to do that as a business owner. As a business owner, you're wearing a lot of hats. So you need to focus on what are the key things that you can do really well because you're the expert in the business that you're running, but you're not the expert in accounting. You're not the expert in marketing, perhaps, or you're not the expert in in finance. So get some help from an appropriate professional to save you time and make sure the job's done correctly and give yourself the best chance of being successful. So you need to, firstly, you make, need to make some deliberate decisions about what you're going to do. Make those action plans and adapt to them. Implement and adapt. Review, revise, and, and start again. Make sure that you are implementing, you're growing. You know, in, business is a changing environment. What happens tomorrow is going to be different to what happened six months ago. We just don't know. But you need to be flexible and ready to adapt. And you give yourself your best chance of being adaptable if you're on top of it. You've got all your systems in place. You've got your marketing plan. You've got your, your business plan, your target sales target plan. And you're implemented. You're reviewing it. You're refining it. And you're getting help. You're getting that accountability in place. You've got a good advice. Giving yourself the best chance of success. And that's what running a business is about. Making sure that you give yourself the best chance of success grow a profitable business and provide the financial results and financial freedoms for you, for yourself, for yourself, your family. And that's why you go into business. Otherwise, why bother? Okay. If you're not getting the results and you could be getting more income from working for somebody else, then maybe that's a decision you need to look at. So, and that's come from our business health assessment, which we talked about last episode. Assess where you're at and is being in business the right thing for you? Because for some people, um, it may not be the best choice. Okay, they may be better to work for somebody else. But we, you know, we want to give you the best shot of being a successful business owner. So three three key things to prioritize. One is first get on top of your financial situation. Understand your, where you're at financially through your accounting system. Sort out your taxes. Set some clear goals. Set clear goals about the upcoming year. What your financial targets are. How much you want to work. How many hours do you want to be working? If you're working 80 hours at the moment, that's not sustainable. You, how, how do you bring that down to 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week? What do you need to do? What cash flow do you need? And how's your stress level? Let's look at what we can, can we do to reduce the stress in your life from your business. So let's have some clearly established objectives. Um, and, you know, clearly established objectives. Why, why are you in business? What do you want to achieve from your business? really helps to give some clarity and purpose to your planning and what outcomes you're heading towards, what actions you take. So be clear about what your objectives are. Make that action plan. Um, put specific steps, specific values, timeframes, and what resources you are going to need to make that happen. What resources are you going to need? And, you know, it might be you need uh, extra sales team for a particular period. So you might need some casual sales staff, or you might need um, to put in place a, 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 you know, a marketing system, or a CRM, a customer relationship database. You might need a marketing plan, or you might need to just change the product mix that you've got. So to specify what those specific actions are and implement, you know, all the good plans in the world mean nothing if you don't have implementation. So we're going to summarize those seven key steps in a little download for you that will be available in the show notes, which you can download. And as always, the, the show notes will contain links to other resources. And you can always check out past episodes on the businessbehindyourbusiness.com website. Uh, we've got links to previous episodes as well as the resources shared in those. So if you're a regular listener, thank you for continuing to listen and support the business behind your business. We really appreciate it. And look, if you're here listening to us for the first time, it's great to have you with us. And if, if there's something that you specifically want to hear about, specifically you want somebody to, to give some guidance on, some experts to bring in on a particular topic, let us know. Reach out to us. Email us at podcast at thebusinessbehindyourbusiness.com or you can use the link in the show notes to ask us a question um, online. And uh, look, we'd love to hear from you about what you love about the business behind your business and what you'd like to hear coming up. So thank you for listening and I'm looking forward to 
catching up with you next time.